James Gray was always bound to become James Gray. From his first film, which he all but disavows now, it was clear he had a thorough understanding of the movies he was about to try to make. He was a modernist in a postmodern landscape. Everyone was trying to make people aware how clever they were. Gray wanted audiences to know that he'd seen The Leopard and Heaven's Gate, and if they hadn't heard of those films, now was the time to go rent them. The minute it was clear, to me anyway, that Gray was a force of such specific good in the landscape of modern American film was this shot of tins of macaroni and deviled eggs. They look terrible and beautiful. The content of the shot, a carefully recreated token of suburban wheel spinning and community, and on we, no one living through it could describe. A church basement party full of people who don't know what else life could offer. That's the central tension of We Own the Night and it manifests in a number of ways. The first and most obvious is the external concerns of Gray, who looks around at other films being made and wonders why no one else would try to make a movie stylistically aligned with the American cinema of the 1970s. Dramatically, this tension manifests in Bobby, a character played by Joaquin Phoenix. He looks at the lives of his father and brother and knows in his heart that there has to be more. The life he concocts for himself, of nice suits, beautiful women, expensive drugs, and shady friends, is a direct response to the tinned macaroni synecdoche of living on the straight and narrow. Of course, he's so concerned with not being them, he fails to see the danger lurking over him. See my friends out there? Vadim is really glad that you made up your mind. Very happy. Ready? Yeah. You'll meet me at the boardwalk in one hour. For your protection and for ours, you'll be searched and blindfolded as we arrive to be able to sample the product. See if you like it, I'm sure you will. You'll discuss the rest of the details with Vadim. Don't raise your voice, he doesn't like it. And for me, I'm taking you to the place where I never took anybody before, especially no Americans. And I don't trust you the way my team does. So, don't. All right? And if you want to see a girlfriend ever again, you will come alone. Board walk. One hour. Every life has a ceiling we can't see until it's too late. The music that drifts over the action of Phoenix's character, disco-influenced punk bands, who've had their anger softened by uppers and purposeful naivete, acts like a faraway sign of change, echoing over the halls and dining rooms of people who don't know their comfortable lives are about to vanish. I talked to my mom yesterday and she's feeling better, so I can move in whenever I want. We Own the Night is a lament for 70s stylistic excesses and purity, represented by bands like The Clash and Blondie making pop songs, and also represented by the presence of veterans like Tony Musanti and Robert Duvall in the supporting cast, which gave way to the punchy, percussive immediacy of the 80s. Can't be this is a boss, baby. The film practically curls up and sleeps in its expertly manicured production design. Gorgeous lighting, courtesy of cinematographer Joaquin Bacaase. This was the purest expression of Gray's concerns to date. 
the most he allowed himself to sink into the narcotic haze of late 80s capitalism, which ironically killed off the mode of production that gave rise to the American movies, he quotes. By the time We Own the Night is meant to take place, New Hollywood was over. It had found its ceiling. Gray turns that particular tension into some of the best and most compellingly confusing action sequences of the last few decades. There are drug busts and a car chase that seem to deliberately aim for a mixture of sleek 80s violence. And 70s clarity. And succeed with flying, if disorienting, colors. Gray, practically alone among his generation, inherited the importance his heroes placed on composition and thematic circularity of the sight of men standing in churches, of a city alive, with people chasing after the bodies of the newly dead, of starting a film with a joke, and then turning it into destiny. Last thing I need is I think I'm a fucking cop. <laughs> Never happened, baby. I could be a cop. We have to fucking do it. Freeze. All right, spread him. Spread him. Go! Go, 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 go! That's my family, Kate. It's not me. Michael, is it true? Don't ask me about my business, Kate. Is it true? Don't ask me about my business. No! We Own the Night is a golden-hued glimpse into a desperate time, a riposte to nostalgia, even as it indulges in its own prostrate form. It's a few hours on your knees, praying to dead gods, but feeling their light anyway. <laughs>